Hi, I'm super happy that you're here and I've recently created a tutorial covering Scala basics and while I was in the process of it, a random thought came to my head. Do programming languages even matter and what programming language is worth learning? My answer to those questions is no and all of them or none depending on how you look at it. But let me explain. When I started in software development, Ajax was the next cool thing and jQuery was all the hype uh, in the web development realm. By the time I had developed in C++ for some time, but my main job was web development with PHP and JavaScript. During that time, it was kind of said that if you do web development, you use either PHP or Perl. Do you even remember Perl? Uh, anyways, there were other programming languages around like Java and so on, but back then web development in Java was rather painful. JSF 1.0, yeah. Fast forward to now, now there are a gazillion programming languages around that basically all can do the same, which is almost everything. And yes, I get that there are special cases like embedded software and stuff like that. I will not directly address those areas since I don't have that much experience in them. But if you do, stay here and tell me in the comments whether the things that I say also apply to those areas. So, does it really matter whether you build a web service using Python, Scala, Java, PHP or whatever? Some might say that Python is slow, Scala is fast and so on. But in reality, for most use cases, this does not matter because the programming language you use most likely won't be the bottleneck, but rather some flaw in your programming or in your architecture. And yes, that also happened to me more often than I'm willing to admit, where a slight change to the program resulted in a huge performance improvement. In my experience, and I got that experience uh, working in big projects at companies like IBM and Porsche, it is actually more about the framework or library that you want to use or that is used in a project you are currently working in than it is about the programming language. And here is why, right after, a short reminder to go completely nuts on that like button. In my experience, there is no need anymore to truly master a specific programming language. To be realistic, what is it really what we do in the projects? Far away from nerding out as a hobby, which by the way, I also like doing, we build web services, data processing jobs, infrastructure code. Those things are not that complex from a micro-architectural standpoint. Some AWS Lambda functions, some processing jobs, some automation code, really not that much complexity. The complexity is more on the macro level where you need an architecture that all those different services, pipelines and whatever play well together and are resilient and so on and so on. So you really don't need to be a wizard in any specific programming language. When you are somewhat experienced in software development, you can basically gain the knowledge for the specific programming language that you need in about a week. It's far more complex to learn the ins and outs of the specific frameworks or libraries that you are using, like Spark, Dataflow, Kafka, whatever. I find myself by far more often reading the documentation of the mentioned tools than actually reading anything related to a specific programming language. And for programming language, I just use what has the best binding for the specific framework or lib that I want to use or that is already used in the project. To maybe put it in the context of data science, do you code Python because you want to code Python or because it is the most comfortable way to use TensorFlow? How many of the language features of Python do you actually use when developing your TensorFlow models? I bet that from a programming complexity point of view, it is somewhere in between like first or second semester of a computer science you know, study or degree, right? Most programming languages are quite similar in their base structure. The only main difference are IDMs and syntax. The syntax can be easily looked up and you get the hang of it in about like a few days. And IDMs are nice to have, but are in projects sometimes even discouraged. The complexity of code in most projects that I've been working on is quite low. And this is for a reason, for maintainability. 
new programmers joining the team that might not be that experienced but still need to be able to understand things quickly and get things done. Usually in bigger projects there is a fluctuation of project members. Every now and then someone drops out and someone new joins the team and yeah, the project manager basically tries to shorten the ramp up time for new members of the team to be able to get things done as much as possible. So the full potential of programming languages and all other idioms often are not even used. Once I was even told that I should not use language specific features so that my coworkers can understand the code more easily. And I know this is not the most optimal behavior. There should be more knowledge transfer and review so that people learn from each other. But down in the trenches, when stuff needs to get done, the reality is sometimes a different one. So in terms of programming languages, you should more focus on grasping the general idea how proper code looks like and get a feeling for structuring your code in a way that it does what it is supposed to do and not that much about mastering one specific programming language. I would say that in terms of programming languages, the 80-20 rule applies. You need to know 20% of a programming language that enables you to do 80% of the work. You should grasp the general concepts so that you can quickly adapt to new requirements. Uh, the client wants to use framework X that requires language Y. Yeah, sure, no problem. Just go for it. And you shouldn't ask yourself what programming language to learn, but rather ask what do I want to accomplish? What problem do I want to solve? What framework or lib can I use for that? What are the languages this framework supports? At least in my opinion, this is a much more reasonable thought process than yeah, what programming language is the best in 2022. And if you're a complete beginner looking for a point to start, learn Python. Even though I'm not the biggest fan, it will teach you all the basics that you need to apply yeah, to apply all the stuff that I mentioned in, the, in this video. The biggest benefit are a huge community and the versatility. I hope you liked this video. If so, it would be great if you could go completely nuts uh, on the like button and leave a comment on what you think about this topic. So far, see you in the next video.